little confidence tip is that slow down their voice. A lot of times your tone of voice and like how fast you talk could showcase like how nervous you are in a setting. You, you shouldn't tolerate anything from anybody, even if it's your own parents. Like this isn't prison, bro. You shouldn't be like told where not to go. Hey bro, I, I could I could answer like a million questions about these fucking Asian uh, Asian parent problems, Asian parent yeah, struggles, bro. At one point I just like rested my head on her shoulder and she caught me uh, staring at her boobs. She's like, what you looking at? Girl just gets up and takes her shirt off and gets on top of me like she's like, Do you wanna play with them? I'm like, uh yes. She called me up a few days later and she's like, Hey, so I gotta tell you something. I'm actually kinda taken and like what do you mean kinda taken? You either taken or not? If you guys wanna be part of this lecture, uh that's when you guys could join the fan house and you guys get first dibs, first seats to my lecture. And usually these will drop about like two weeks to a month later. Uh, but truly I, I I'd be dropping some gems in here, so yeah, it'd be it'd be uh, about whatever, just life, career advice, relationship advice, fucking advice. God, who knows? I'm actually gonna invite some of you guys on to to ask a question. Yeah, let's just get it started. We got we got 16 people in here. You know, uh, this is a nice little classroom we got. What's good, bro? How you doing? Uh, I watched like this podcast of like of you in contrast, right? And yeah. Are you like talking about like? How like eight do Asians? Like, you're like saying like how Asians got like negative ribs, and I I kind of got the issue right now, man. <laughs> what well, at what point of the podcast did I say that? I, I think it was more of contrast saying that. I mean, it, it's it's facts. I mean, um, like you, yeah. I mean, go go ahead. Tell me about <laughs> your, your negative ribs. Nah, bro. <laughs> Dude, I one. I'm, I can't talk to girls. The two. Wait, how old are you? First of all, hold on, like, hold on. Like Southeast Asians, they be born short, bro. That's crazy. Southeast Asia. So, so what are you? What are you? Indonesian or something? Nah, I'm, I'm from Cambodia. Cambodia. Okay. Yeah. Nah, you could you could low key pass it as like Spanish, bro. Cam Cambodians, you know, they they like y'all look like Filipinos. Um, yeah, that, that is true. <laughs> But 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 what's this uh, what's this negative? Are you in high school? Are you in college? Yeah, I'm in high school right now. I'm a junior. When I was a junior, I was I was asking girls to to <laughs> to do their homework. My, my friend in Costa Rica, like uh -huh. he, he lived in Costa Rica, right? He right. All the girls, bro, like like he he like as tall as me. He like he like five four, maybe five five. Yeah, yeah. I mean, different different uh, different parts of the country. Different girls are like might be more freakier or might be more open-minded right whereas like yeah, asian girls especially in high school i felt like they be they be you know kind of reserved and they don't start glowing up until like college right yeah that's facts because yeah, some that's of these true. asian girls they they would like in college they would get contacts and then you know they, they take off their, their nerdy little glasses they put on some some makeup and i was like wait hold on becky you wasn't looking like this in high school <laughs> right yeah, that's true bro but um but yeah no junior year is a is a really important year bro you got a you got prom coming up you got you got you know coming up i mean i don't do i don't know if like there's anyone i'm trying to ask out though like what what do you mean that like there's nobody that you're talking to at the moment nope Dang. Really. are you in the states or are you in cambodia like like where are you at right I'm now? in the states I'm okay the states. so what do you just go to class go back home jerk off play video games like is that the routine uh, yeah how you know my schedule because like that? <laughs> <laughs> that shit was my schedule back in the day bro <laughs> that's, that's crazy bro you might be my brother <laughs> <laughs> i think that's why a lot of people could, could relate to me right in, in that sense that yeah. you know I, I i had the same same upbringing but i uh i grew out of that um i mean and I, I started going to the gym more like like i I'm, i weigh like 120 some shit i and i can like lift a plate 120 okay okay i mean uh you know for for high school right that's you know you everybody starts somewhere but i would say the one thing in high school if i were to go back in time um i would eat a whole lot more like how you look matters so much in high school as as much as like people don't want to believe it like how, how you how you look won't matter at any point in life but like high schoolers are, are the most like judgmental people like and superficial people 
I, I think. I would say, like, take this time to really focus on yourself, bro. And, and j just know that appearance do matter, but you have the choice to work on your appearance. You know, you could go to the gym. Yeah. You could push yourself a lot harder than you think. That's, that's the thing. Until, like, I got a personal trainer. Like, a personal trainer taught me that, like, I could push myself a lot harder than 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 you think right you're at the gym you feel like oh i could i should only lift one plate like for for the rest of the semester like no you should always be adding more weight you should always be eating more gaining more weight like the, the worst thing you could do for yourself is just do the same thing over and over again yeah um, that, that's, that's but but that's the trap you it's kind of hard to put on weight man like it's, it's, it's really hard for me. That's the perk of like joining a, a sport team because you'll you'll have coaches there to tell you, you know, you got to eat this amount, right? And you got to prep for for this certain thing. That's why you, you you know you see the wrestling team, fucking their biggest shit, right? That's what I'm trying to join actually. Yo, honestly, bro, go for it. Like I like I would I would encourage you to even try just make some friends even if you're like the scrawniest person there at least you're you pushing yourself bro it's uncomfortable but trust me bro trust me when i say this it will be good for your growth yeah yeah i appreciate it man absolutely bro um i'm, I'm gonna take the next caller because i think i think you know i'm gonna i'm gonna give everybody a good like 10 yeah, of course, of course. 10 minutes uh, of time before um you know, there, there's other people I, I want to get to for this call. So, uh, who, who we got next? Sex Warlock. <laughs> you got us. You got, yeah, what's up, bro? Damn, you got a deep ass voice. Thanks. <laughs> Recently, um, I got into a situation with the, with the Navy G. <laughs> and, uh, and it was like, so it's literally like the first APG I've ever had, you know, because like, I'm Latino, and you know that apparently, you know, Asians aren't really that much into like Latin Americans or so like that. In some ways, I was excited. Mm. But what's the problem? Happened to, what's up? Yeah. What, what? What was the? What was the problem? Well, okay. So, so here's how it went down. So I go out. Uh, I go out one night with my boys and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the guys was like, "Hey, this girl I'm talking to, you know, she's she says it. She says if you know, we can like, I guess combine our groups." And, you know, just, like, hang out for the rest of the night. And we were like, okay, cool. It was supposed to be a guy's night out, but sure, why not? And I meet this girl through, like, that group. And literally, like, as soon as, like, we, I guess, we start talking, like, we instantly, like, have a connection because uh, we went from, like, uh, talking about anime and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. She also, because, like, I'm also, like, a big uh, JoJo fan. Yeah. And she turned out to be a big JoJo fan as well. So. Hey, also, bro. Like, we were just vibing, dude. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, like, right on the spot, like, hey, so, like, like what's your Instagram or something like that? Okay. And I got the Instagram, and then, like, got the phone number, and then literally the next day, like, hey, you want to do something? Like, yeah, sure, why not? And the second day, literally, like, all we did was, like, we were just, like, hanging out at her place, and literally, it was just, like, it just happened there. We just, like, made out. Okay. I'm like, and I'm like, this is the best, best thing in the world. I'm <laughs> okay. Like, I'm on cloud nine. Oh right, God. right, 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 right. Y'all fuck? And, no, 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 no. Okay, so that's day two, right? Uh-huh. And I, I leave, and then day three comes around, and it's like, hey, let's go get some lunch. I'm like, sure. We go to, to this restaurant, but it turns out that there's like a, like like an hour wait. Okay. And so we're just like, hey, you, do you want to just like get something to eat and I don't know, go watch anime at your place? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, sure. Came back to my place, and uh, we we're watching the uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. And at one point, I just like laid my rested my head on her shoulder, mm -hmm. and and she caught me uh, staring at her boobs. She's like, what are you looking at? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, Your titties. Uh, what 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 else am I? <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> like, what are you looking at? I'm like, uh, nothing. And dude, <laughs> without like not even like. A millisecond. This girl just gets up and takes her shirt off and her bra off. I'm like, wait, Fire. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Fire. And she just like gets on top of me. Like, she's like, do you want to play with them? I'm like, uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that happened. And so we made out, but we still didn't didn't do anything after that. And, okay. And then fourth day comes around and she's like, you know what? I, hey, can I just come over to your place? I'm like, uh, sure. 
And she wants to get clapped, bro. Oh my god. You... No, 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 no. <laughs> Fourth day, I mean, come on. The signs are obvious. And it happened. It definitely happened, bro. And it was so quick. I did not even hesitate. Okay. Really, uh, she came through that door, bro. She had, like, a really, really short skirt. And I'm like, God damn. Yeah. Um, Wait, so so, so you, ca you came here for, for a story time to brag? Or what, what was the problem? No, 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 no. Here comes the problem. So uh, she called me up a few days later. And she's like, hey, so I got to tell you something. I'm like, uh oh. Uh, so turn. So I, I, I'm actually kind of taken. I'm like, what do you mean, kind of taken? You gonna take it or not? Like, the fuck? What? <laughs> oh, yeah. And so I'm like, I mean, I know, I don't know. Like personally, I never like got him with a girl that quickly, except it, unless it was like a one night stand. This bitch was cheating. <laughs> On her. Yeah, this girl was cheating, dude. And like, like I just, I don't, I don't like being the other guy. You know what I'm saying? Did, did, did you not see any signs at all? No, no signs, dude. Instagram had no signs of this, dude. Like, I don't know. How, like, how, how are you? So, okay, wait, 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 wait. wait elaborate on, on, on her phone call because she can't just call you. Oh, I'm, I'm taking, like, what's the, what's the context? What's the backstory? Like, okay, well, it's a long distance relationship. Let's just say that. Oh, yes. how old is this girl? How, how, how uh, old? She is uh, 24. 20 f damn yeah damn yeah and now i'm 21. see this is why i can't do long distance relationships bro you far away from from your partner and you just got knees to be honest bro by the second date you you could have clapped did you make moves did you escalate like in the bedroom i'm gonna be honest not really uh i was actually in a relationship like a couple weeks ago like we ended i mean obviously we ended uh, i just got out of a relationship oh damn you toxic too what the fuck <laughs> Y'all, y'all perfect for each other. What the fuck? <laughs> it takes some time to. No, I shouldn't be talking. I got with somebody after my relationships. But <laughs> yeah, and you know, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Like when it happened, like I, uh -huh. I was like, okay, like should I really be doing this? Like, and you know, I was thinking with my other head, if you know what I'm saying. It seemed like you guys like really clicked, though, right? That, that that's a, that's an important part. Mm -hmm. And then that's why it led where it led to and for some reason right you have this little abg fantasy all right that you wanted to get off your bucket list which you know i feel like for, for non-asian even for asian guys you know everybody kind of wants a, a abg once in their life i think at this point yeah i i, I <laughs> morally you know I, I would say don't keep pursuing this girl right because then you also don't want want drama with the man but then at the same time you, you also just, just got out of a relationship too right don't you need time to heal, bro? Nah, fuck all that. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you, dude. I saw, I saw her, I'm like, I'm just gonna throw, throw my shot, dude. Nah, fuck it, I don't even care what happens. At this point, at, at this point, when was the last time you, you spoke to her? Last time I spoke to her, uh, yesterday, I think. Yeah, yesterday. Yeah. And, and you guys gonna keep fucking? From what it sounds like? She actually talked to me about that, and she's like, oh, I'm not sure if I wanna keep on doing this, but I also don't wanna stop seeing you. So Damn. I think the fucking is Damn, was the sex whack? Damn, you was giving bad dick, bro? Hold on. We we need to fix that. I don't know. How was the sex? How was the sex? Okay. Be honest. Okay, in my part, uh, it felt great, but I didn't nut. You, you, you didn't nut? No. No. Was it awkward? Oh, no, absolutely not. No. Not so it was really hot and passionate? Yeah, it was definitely hot and passionate, but uh, it got to a point. I don't know. I just got tired, and... And I mean, she was also like, she looked worn out as well. So, oh, okay. Just I... like, okay, let's just stop here. The best sex though is like, is not that you guys are tired. It's like, ten minutes of like great sex, and both of you guys come at the same time. That to me is like the best sex. It's like you guys, it's a sprint, and then you guys come. You guys go for like round two or round three afterwards. The times where like I had to put in mad work and it, it would last for a long time. Like th those low key be, feel more like a workout than, than actual sex, bro. <laughs> if you just got out of a relationship, you shouldn't look into getting into another one, to be honest. Treat this girl <laughs> like, exactly like what she is, bro. She for the streets. <laughs> she cheating on her man. Don't take this girl seriously, bro. That, that's my advice to, to you. Uh, despite how, how much you feel like you, you have a connection with her, 
uh, you not ready for another relationship. Um, and I don't even think she, she, she is not wifey material whatsoever. Know who she is to your life, which is a, a booty call, I think. And yeah. Um, and honestly, if the sex ain't even that crazy, I wouldn't continue, but that's just me. Um, but yeah, j j just know your place with her. That's my advice. All right. Awesome. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You got a question for me, bro? No, I have a comment about the uh, other guy about gaining weight, actually. Okay, go for it. I was like a skinny Asian kid last year, mm -hmm. but um, I, th I think a lot of Asians are, to be honest. Like, yeah, yeah. I think I think it is part of like our genetics in a in a sense where you know you you have. I feel like we don't do a lot of strenuous exercise, just like no, in, in in our history book, you know. When you see those fucking kung fu guys, they're strong, but they're not like. They're um, still skinny. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What well, I did, I just like went to Costco. I fucking balled out every week. I fucking bought <laughs> a bunch of meat and a bunch of fucking protein shakes. And that's what I did. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie, bro. You you got it. Like it, it's either that. Or like just eat as just stuff yourself with food, bro. Like yeah, so you whatever you see. Yeah, yeah, no, dead ass. Like that, I I I don't know if you you guys uh, seen the, the the Goku video I did like a while back, but yeah, I, yeah. I I put on twenty five pounds in like three four months, and twenty five pounds like I went from one fifty one fifty to like one seventy five. So I don't know how much weight you gain over like a span of time, but 25 pounds, that's like a substantial amount. And the only way I got to that point was just, bro, I just kept eating, bro. Like it, it, it was like any, any point during the day, I would have big ass meals too. Like, oh, hot pot, just get hot pot or make hot pot at home. Like you could just buy a whole bunch of ingredients and just throw a whole bunch of <laughs> food. I know a lot of you guys here are Asian, Chinese, you guys know what hot pot is, right? You know what hot pot is, Panda. Yeah, of course. Um, so yeah, you could just fucking stuff yourself with food that way. Costco is also a great option because you know you could buy shit in bulk. Buy in bulk. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's fucking amazing. Um, but yeah, and, and about like um, the fucking confidence thing. Mm -hmm. Like honestly, my confidence went like way up because like I gained like 20, 20, 25 pounds, and I also like my fucking weightlifting it went from like 175 on a deadlift to like 300 now god like, damn I was only like, yeah i was only like uh 25 pounds of like me yeah that, that's like that's a huge improvement and my bench also went up to one plate so i was like holy shit i'm gonna clap it up for you bro that's good shit that's more than me quite frankly oh, uh i think at the end of my goku workout i was deadlifting like i i maxed out at like 315 for one deadlift I, I can't do 315. I can do a flat 300. Oh, 300? I mean, you know, you, you, oh, we almost there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I tried it, but nah, I had to use the 2.5s. Now, e even if you got the chalk, even if you drink some pre-workout? Holy shit, bro. I got, I got the Godzilla pre-workout. I took that shit <laughs> twice. I, I could not fucking stop moving, bro. Like, <laughs> I stopped taking that shit like a week ago because I couldn't fucking sleep. It kicked me up to like one. I was like, Hey, but but it's good that that you know you you're really investing in like uh, the, the the necessary like fuel for for your workouts. You know the creatines, the the pre workouts, the the proteins after. Like it's it, a lot of money, but I, I think it's worth it because honestly, last year I, I got like everybody in the hallways or like anybody who was like this like people who knew me. Yeah. Like holy shit, you're skinny, and then like. This year they saw me again and like holy shit you got huge. I was like, oh thanks. Yeah, bro, it's a it's a great feeling. I mean, um, are are you in high school, college? Yeah, I'm a junior in high school. Oh shit! Look at you, like already, like you 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 a step ahead of like a lot of a lot of people in your class probably. And you're going into college feeling good, feeling confident about yourself. So yeah. I, I think like, honestly, confidence is just key in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Walking up with your head high and like just. Feel confident is so much better than like fucking looking at the fucking ground. Yeah. And, like, being depressed all the time because that used to be me, but I was like, no, I don't want to do that anymore. A lot of times, people really start their self Im uh, improvement journey with working out. I think the next step for you should be uh, should be books. Um, a lot of times, books. yeah. Well, like I'm reading really, like uh, the, the David Goggins book and uh, the Soul Art of Not Giving a Fuck. Oh right shit. Now. Okay. In high school? Look at you. I was just watching like some Steezy Kane video and he was like, 
this is a book read it how's that okay Amazon, right? <laughs> no 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 it's it's no you're doing great bro like for a high schooler you're already on on like a faster track than a, a lot of people bro like what you you 15 16 you reading like yeah. self-help books yeah, yo good was, shit yeah. Um, like a month ago. Wow. You, you know, you got some, you got some infant to your voice too. Like, you know, I feel like no, my, my voice is like super high compared to like a lot of my friends. Oh, really? I, I think at least I think I used to be called like high pitch voice. Yeah. Like two years ago in freshman year. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure anymore. I think another um, little confidence tip is that you should, I think a lot of people should learn to know how to slow down their voice. A lot of times your tone of voice and like how fast you talk could showcase like how nervous you are in a setting. So sometimes when I go to a set or if I'm on a date or like if I'm at, at a meeting, important meeting, right? Sometimes I would slow down the way I talk kind of like this. Right, but a lot of times when you, you, you know, when you're nervous and you, you're kind of like fumbling over your words, right? That's when you sound nervous. But if you learn, and maybe you could practice this in just like normal day-to-day -day speech, um, how to control your voice and how to slow down your voice, you could build up your confidence that way too. Because then you're enunciating all your words properly and you're saying words with more confidence rather than like this uh, like nervous energy that I, I see a lot of um, younger people have. So that's just another... Yeah. Um, confidence tip. Yeah, um, for me, I, I just like speak really fast most of the time. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know why. It is just something I do. I think I think a lot of times younger people um, might find themselves doing that, right? It, it, in nervous scenarios, nervous settings. Um, but yeah, just having like you could talk fast if you want to. Like you know, I could talk fast too. But it's just like having that other tool in your arsenal to know when I could slow my speech down to in invoke a certain feeling. Right, it's just that's an maybe this is a little little advanced tip, but anyways, um, I'm gonna just you know if, if there's any other questions for from you. Uh, I think uh, no, I think I'm done here. All yeah. right, brother. All right, yeah. All right, see ya. Okay, so let's say um, you're talking with your girl, right? Uh huh. And like 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 we, we want to hit it off, right? Right. But like you got like parents in your house twenty four seven. That's the thing. And, like both. Um, party. So it's just like, okay, so where do you, where do we fuck? Like, what's your solution, Jimmy? Okay. Um, so there's a couple options, right? Okay. Is is this girl, how, how long have you been seeing this girl? No, it's more of a friends with benefits thing. It's just a friends with benefits? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I had, I had one of those, like, a uh, couple years back when she would, like, I would sneak her into the house. Um, I would do it through the basement. <laughs> And we, uh, coincidentally, back in my, my old spot or at my parents' place, we, we, have, we have a basement with a bedroom in the basement. So she would actually enter the house uh, through the basement door. She would actually sleep over too. And then um, I remember my mom would, <laughs> would call me up for breakfast in the morning <laughs> while she was still downstairs. And then I had to like sneak her out. Um, but then, so it, it, it actually depends on the layout of your house. Like if you're, like if you need to go through your parents, um, then you, you gotta like time it. <laughs> Do you have a basement situation? Um, I mean, I got one, but like I got people living there. You got people in your basement too? Yeah. It's a full household? Yeah. Damn. Uh, honestly, at that point, just like, I would just make a quick introduction. I wouldn't really like, like, you don't have to over explain to your parents like, oh, she's just a friend. Like, no, nah, she's just, she's just a friend. That's it. You know, she's not a girlfriend. You know, she's just a friend that's, that's studying. Like, make up some excuse, bro. I know, like, you used to go to, like, K-Town at, like, night, right? But, like, yes. I, I would get my ass beat if, if I did that. So, I don't know, like, do your parents care? Or what's well, how old are you? I'm 18. Eight, but yeah. <laughs> what the fuck you doing in K Town? I, I I started going to K Town when I was like twenty, twenty one, right? Uh, so unless you have a fake ID, I like th there's not much you could do. I've we we've worked up to the point where like my family is so just open minded and so accepting of like whatever. Just because like I'm on YouTube now, like I make money, I prove to them 
that like, hey, you shouldn't be controlling. Like if you're not as controlling to, to your to your um, to your son or to your daughter, you might actually they might actually flourish in life. They, like your, your parents should like prioritize your happiness. So you should prioritize your happiness first. Right. So you got to just start doing things that you think makes you happy. I would just go to K-Town and like and just have fun, bro. Like, it, it, you know, it, live, live life. Um, and then if they want to have a conversation uh, uh, with you about it later, make them have a conversation with you rather than like, oh, it's just straight, I'm gonna beat your ass, da da da. And then don't allow that. Like, fuck, like you, you 18, you about, you, you about it, you know, you're in college, you're a grown ass, you're, you're turning into a grown ass man. Like, what, what are you doing, dad? Still hitting me. Like, what the fuck? You, you shouldn't tolerate anything from anybody, even if it's your own parents. Like, this isn't prison, bro. You shouldn't be, like, told where not to go. Hey, bro, I, I, could, I could answer, like, a million questions about these fucking Asian, Asian parent problems, Asian parent struggles, bro. Because, like, I, I've gone through it all. Like, I'm Chinese. Like, I, they, they were immigrants. Bro, I was an immigrant. I came, I came to, to um, America when I was five. So You're technically a fob, I'm technically yeah I'm a fob bro like I like I had a fob upbringing so like I get all, all these like Asian restrictions it's it's, it's tough right. but you you you'll, you'll make it out bro. Like New York City crime rate is just not it. So like when, when I know you be like uh, K Town like yeah. How do you like get home like safe? I also don't. I also don't like the subways. You know New York City. Yeah yeah it depends. Well, uh, what what borough do you live? Same thing as you. Queens, um, yeah, normally, uh, so between, when I was like 20 to 21, to even 22, um, I didn't have the money to just Uber, because like nowadays, I'm not gonna lie, I, I, <laughs> I be living a little bougie, bro, I just, I just, I just Uber from K-Town, um, and either that, or like, I would stay with a friend in the city, like, I would stay at, um, like, your mom's house, like, with Elliot and Kelly sometimes, um, in, in the city, so like half the time I, I'm not even home, but when I am home, but back then, right when I was when I was younger, I would honestly just take the train. Um, but I would I would go home at a reasonable time. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't go back at like two a.m. three a.m. And even when I do, sometimes I would still take an Uber from the train station to my house. It, it depends, bro. Like it, it, if you live in Jamaica, then then it's a little tough. But like I, I, huh, flushing. I mean, Flushing isn't too bad of a neighborhood, bro. Like, yeah. y y just just have have pepper spray on you. But e even still, at the end of the day, like I, I I grew up in New York my whole life, and I've never <laughs> really encountered a, a uh, you know a crime that happened to me. Maybe I'm lucky, but I would say for the majority of people, like it doesn't really happen to them. But if you want to be safe, I would recommend a pepper spray. All right, all right, all right, cool. All right, bro. Looking forward to, to having you as a consistent, you know, I, I like consistent people. I like checking in on, on people every every so often. So, yes, yeah. Sir. Yes, sir. Right, thanks. Peace, peace. Yo, I just got out of a long distance relationship about half a year ago. And that person was basically my first relationship ever. I never got the chance to meet this person in real life. How the fuck? <laughs> Okay, no, you know what? Don't, 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 don't judge my mans. Uh, I'm someone who has been pretty introverted. I'm 21, still a virgin. Haven't even had my first kiss yet. I've been recently hitting hit the gym, trying to improve myself in certain aspects of my life. I do want to try and make more friends and talk to more women. I still got this current semester and another to go before I graduate university. I get pretty nervous just going up and talking to someone and find it hard to just get out there more. So I guess... My question is how to do so in general. The fact that you, you formulate a relationship over the internet shows me that you haven't built the best habits to meet people in real life. Not to roast you a little bit, but you know, I felt like I had some long distance relationships on Gaia online. <laughs> That's like a chat room where, where I had an avatar and I was just messaging, you know, girls. I was like 13, 14. Technically, you could count those as like long distance, you know, but obviously it's a little bit more serious. But still, around 13, even when I was 15, I had a bunch of like AIM girlfriends. You know, I, I would just spend nights just writing on AIM, chatting. 
And for those of you guys too too fucking young to, to know what AIM is, it's like a messenger. It's like it's like it's like Instagram messenger. Like you just message each other all night. You guys I'd be like by the computer messaging them or like sometimes I'll FaceTime them. That's not what a relationship is, man. That's uh you're you're not living life to the fullest. That that's the best way I could put it. I think the first thing, um, if you are introverted, I think a lot of introverts, right? Everybody could tap into like a little extroverted part of them when they're going out when they're meeting new people and you could be like a natural introvert you could like in your in your most basic natural state you could just be like you know i don't you don't want to go out you don't want to talk to people but when you do go out you could tap into like an extroverted side of you that is talkative that is asking people questions but it's just knowing what those things are and, and, and think about thinking about how to be extroverted like consciously, right? How to be how to consciously be your extrovert. So I'm gonna give you a list of things to consciously think about next time you go out. It's like this is a like a list of extroverted shit. And then you just tap into that to make new friends, to meet more people, to talk to girls. Um the first thing is ask people questions. <laughs> like the fuck obviously um, but yeah, no, just like, first of all, it's just making the approach. Some simple questions. It's like ask something related to the environment you're in. Like in party settings, like, oh, what, uh, what brings you to the party? Who do you know here? Who did you come with? What do you do? And just getting the ball rolling. At parties, more than likely people are willing to talk back to you because it's a party. Um, in class, not so much. From my experience, I've never met really close friends in classrooms. I met them at clubs, you know, uh, extracurricular activities. Some of my strongest, closest connections that I formed in college was through clubs. And, and for Asian people, it'd be the libraries. It'd be the first floor library <laughs> where like Asians huddle. And I just remember like at 10 p.m., 11 p.m. when everybody vacated the library, it just be the the, the it be like a small or like sometimes big group of Asians that just all be hanging out together, and um, slowly you'll start to see familiar faces, and then that's when you just introduce yourself like, oh hey, what's your name? <laughs> hey, in a classroom sometimes people just want to get in and out of class. They're not really in the mood to talk. Sometimes 8 a.m. classes, 10 a.m. class, people just fucking rolled out of bed. Not the best time to talk. Um, in college, I would say it would be like 10 p.m., 11 p.m. when everybody's finished their work and are, are in the mood to talk. Be very mindful of when and, and where is a good place to meet people that are open to, to just making conversation. Um, and at that point, conversation would, would kind of flow naturally. Um, I feel like, yeah, in the library setting, it's like, oh, what are you studying right now? Oh, like, what, 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 what are you, what are you working on right now? Do you have any exams coming up? Oh, like, what do you, <coughs> what extra career? Normally, they're in the library, they're working on something, right? So that could just be a start of the conversation. And then once you ask them that, you're like, what major are you? From there, you could ask, like, look at their their fucking laptop their book maybe they got like a sorority sticker on their laptop like oh you're part of da 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 how is that sorority i'm thinking about joining like like just find things that you could spark conversation find things like little 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 points little like uh uh clues of of, of who that person is and ask them about that right so maybe they're wearing like a like a fucking jersey or, or like a special backpack. Oh, you must be part of the volleyball team or, or the basketball team. Like, how's that? You know, just ask some more questions about them. And then people love talking about themselves. So yeah, so number one is finding clues about the other person and asking them more questions about them. Naturally, the more people talk, the more they'll just like you. <laughs> be a good listener. That's number two. When people talk, listen. Pay attention. Remember, you know, like who this person is, uh, what's her name. Just you know, make them feel important. Those are two, like those are two skills I take to this very day. That is paramount, the most important advice that I want to impart on someone to to um, approach people and make new friends. To to, to get over the the, the nerves part. Uh, an, another thing that holds people back is the fear. Is the literal nervous anxiety 
emotion that you feel right before you walk up to that person. Um, and that stops a lot of people. So to, to get over that, you just gotta fucking do it. And <laughs> you just gotta do it. And, you know, try to do it in, in environments that are, are more open to, to talking and are prone to less rejection. So just know when, where those environments are. You know, like clubs, not really good for talking. Obviously, loud music, you're, you're shouting in somebody's ear. I hate clubs. If you want to like mac on a girl, bars are better in in, in a school setting. Um, kickbacks at somebody's dorm is a lot better than just like a loud frat party. I feel like you won't meet that much genuine connections at frat parties. So just know your environments. That's I would say like a more advanced skill. But um, getting over that anxiety would I would say that's the hardest thing. If I was to look back on my life and pinpoint what the hardest thing for me to get over was. Um, I would say just initially getting over that anxiety of like going up to someone. So, so just know that like whatever you're, you're dealing with right now it might be like, I get it, bro. Like it's hard. It's really, really hard. Um, but just know that uh, accepting that and just doing it anyways. If you guys want to be a part of this in person and have your questions answered, then I suggest you guys join the fan house and we're we're really trying to um, we're we're trying to impart some life changing advice, bro. Like so, some of this, some of the things I tell you might just change your life, and it's it's free. I mean, I mean, yeah, you, you pay some a little bit of money, what to to support your boy who's been making content for you guys for like ten, for like six plus years. Like why why not? You know, and then in part I will share everything that I know about life about everything i will impart that advice to you guys so yeah ask away and i'll see you guys in the fan house